Hi guys, I hope you're good. So today, join me to learn all about the light independent reaction. It's a fascinating part of photosynthesis. We're gonna learn all about the Calvin cycle, RUBP, GP, TP. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Okay guys, we're in for a really good one today. We're going to be learning about the light dependent reaction of photosynthesis. So this is all about the Calvin cycle, and I'm gonna talk you through the stages in this fascinating process and how plants form glucose using water, carbon dioxide, and light. Which is, if you think about it, that is mind blowing. It's fantastic that plants can create food from light, carbon dioxide, and water. So I've got a little overview of the carbon cycle here, and we can see the carbon dioxide coming in at the top left. We've got RUBP, GP, TP, and we're really gonna dissect this in a moment. But first of all, let's look at some key terms and definitions that you need to know in order to understand this topic. So first of all, we have ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Now that provides energy in small, manageable amounts, and it's broken down in a single step reaction. We have RUBP, that stands for ribulose bisphosphate. And that's a five carbon sugar that kicks off the Calvin cycle. Rubisco is an enzyme. It's the enzyme that catalyzes the carboxylation of RUBP. So that's where carbon dioxide is added to our five carbon RUBP to make a six carbon compound. Now, Rubisco is short for ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. Carboxylase because it catalyzes the carboxylation. Next, we have G3P, also known as glycerate free phosphate. That's a free carbon acid. We then have triose phosphate, TP, which is a free carbon sugar. We have NADP, that's a coenzyme that picks up protons from water in the light dependent reaction. Now, once it's picked up the protons, it will become reduced and it's therefore known as reduced NADP or NADPH. Now that's a coenzyme that's used to reduce the G3P, the glycerate free phosphate to the triose phosphate, the TP. So it's also known as reduced NADP. And the reason I've stressed that there is because AQA always talk about reduced NADP. In fact, if you look at the mark schemes, they often say reduced NADP first and then accept NADPH in the alternatives underneath. So reduced NADP is what AQA favor. Now the stroma, that's the aqueous matrix. It's basically the fluid within the chloroplast. And that's where the Calvin cycle is going to be taking place in that stroma. Redox reactions, I call them redox reactions, which is, I shouldn't really do it, you know, like the bubble bath. It's, it's a bit of a habit. It's actually a redox reaction and it stands for reduction oxidation. Okay. But let, let it slide guys. You know what I mean? So we have reduction, which is the gain of electrons or protons, positively charged hydrogen ions. Oxidation is the loss of electrons or positively charged hydrogen ions. Now, the light dependent reaction, next of all, this happens in the phylacoid membranes. It happens in the phylacoid discs. And remember, a stack of phylacoids is known as a granum. Multiple granum are referred to as grana. And we also have between the phylacoids intergranal lamellae. So they're the little kind of, they look like little bananas between the membranes in some diagrams. And basically, the products of the light dependent reaction that we need to be talking about today in the light independent reaction are NADPH and ATP. Now, finally, the light independent reaction that happens in the stroma. It involves the formation of organic, meaning carbon containing substances like glucose using CO2, NADPH and ATP. But that's not all. It's not just glucose that it makes. It also makes amino acids, lipids, nucleotides, starch, cellulose, 
Okay, so the Calvin cycle really does make a lot of useful products in the plant. And we're going to get into it a little bit more in a moment. So this is the Calvin cycle. I highly recommend you draw this diagram. So first of all, we have carbon dioxide coming in and combining with RUBP with that enzyme we mentioned, Rubisco. Now we have one carbon from the CO2 and five carbons from the RUBP. Combined, they're going to make a six carbon unit here, which is made up of two glycerate free phosphates. So two times GP. Now each glycerate free phosphate is made up of three carbons. So that's why it's a six carbon kind of compound here. Now, what we're going to do is reduce the GP into TP. And you can see here the energy for that is provided by ATP hydrolysis. So we have ATP going to ADP plus PI. And the reduction occurs because of our coenzyme NADPH. So notice how the hydrogen has been knocked off that NADP. And it's been donated to the TP or the GP to make TP. So we go RUBPGPTP, RUBPGPTP. So this six carbon kind of area here, we're going to lose a carbon and that's going to go to useful substances such as glucose. So it would take six turns of the Calvin cycle to make glucose. However, triose phosphate can just be used. So we can just end the reaction there and the plant can just use the triose phosphate you know, to make glucose. But if it keeps going around in a cycle, what will happen is energy from ATP will be used to convert the TP back into RUBP. Okay. So that in a nutshell is the Calvin cycle. Now let's go through in a little bit more detail then. So CO2 combines with RUBP in a process called carboxylation. Rubisco catalyzes this reaction. So that's here. Two molecules of GP are formed. NADPH is oxidized, reducing two times GP to two times TP using energy from ATP hydrolysis occurring here. Then we have some TP is used to form molecules like lipids, starch, cellulose, and amino acids but the majority reforms our UBP and the cycle continues. So that's going to happen here. Now, just to note, NADP and ADP are going to go from the stroma back into the phylicoids where they're going to be involved in the light dependent reaction. ATP is going to pick up a phosphate in photophosphorylation, becoming ATP. And NADP is going to pick up hydrogens and electrons from the light dependent reaction to become reduced NADP. So this is the man that discovered the whole process. He won a Nobel Prize for this and it's fantastic. It's, it's so beautifully simple what he did. He did an experiment called Calvin's lollipop and it's called Calvin's lollipop simply because it looks like a lollipop. So he had this container, this transparent container that allowed light through and he filled it with algae. Light would shine on it and the algae would begin to photosynthesize because algae is single-celled photosynthetic plant cells. Now, air and CO2 is pumped in and underneath it, we have a tap that will allow some of the algae to be siphoned off so that it goes into the hot methanol here. So let's go through the process. So number one, algae is grown in a lollipop. Okay, lollipop. Not a real lollipop, obviously, apparatus that resembles a lollipop. Number two, radioactive hydrogen carbonate, and it's radioactively labeled, it's an isotope, it's C14, that's injected. Number three, algae uses the radioactive carbon dioxide to photosynthesize, so it uses it in the Calvin cycle. So we can see there, CO2 goes into the Calvin cycle. Well, here, that radioactive carbon is going to get assimilated into that algae in the Calvin cycle. So number four, we have time intervals. So every five seconds, open the tap at the bottom and release some algae into the hot methanol, instantly stopping all chemical reactions from taking place. Okay. 
Then number five is we separate and identify the compounds. And we do that using two-way chromatography. Now these are the results. So at zero seconds, only CO2 would be found. At five seconds, we'd have G3P. At 10 seconds, there'd be G3P and TP. At 15 seconds, we'd have G3P, TP, and glucose. And at 20 seconds, there'd be G3P, TP, glucose, back to RUBP. And we can see that displayed here beautifully in that Calvin cycle. So that's how it was discovered. So to summarize, guys, the light independent reaction uses NADPH, aka reduced NADP, and ATP from the light dependent reaction. RUBP reacts with CO2 to form GP. Rubisco catalyzes this carboxylation, and remember it's an enzyme, so temperature is going to speed it up. Increased substrate concentration will speed up the reaction. pH, all of that good stuff that affects the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. ATP and NADPH reduce GP to TP. Some TP regenerates RUBP, in fact, the majority of it. Some TP is used to make organic substances such as cellulose, starch, glucose, amino acids, nucleotides, lipids, etc. So I hope this video helped you guys. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I want to help you smash these exams. I will see you in the next one.